Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff. This is your podcast covering tactics for creating winning leadership and sustainable winning organizations. Discover more information detailed in their books, Gapology, Imbar, and their newest release, Speed of Purpose. We can be reached at gapology.org and our books can be found at amazon.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. As a reminder, Gapology is available as an audiobook on Audible. So if you prefer to listen to your books in the car or just need a break from talk radio, Gapology on Audible is a great option and one that can be a tremendous impact on your life. Okay, so for today's episode, I'm going to share another short blog from our book, Gapology Inspirations. Mark and I did a full podcast on this topic just a few weeks ago, and you should definitely give that one a listen. This one is called Borrowing Power. Borrowing Power. Have you ever had one of those neighbors? You know the type, the one that constantly borrows things. The one that comes over to your house every weekend and borrows a rake, a ladder, a cup of sugar, or even borrows you to help them move a refrigerator. I have one of those. In fact, my neighbor borrowed a drill to hang some pictures that he bought for his home two years ago, and I haven't seen it since. I guess it's a lot easier to borrow something than to drive to the store and buy it. It's cheaper too. Well, for him anyway. It does, however, make me think about something that I used to do when I was a retail store manager in the early days of my career. It's something that we call borrowing power. I used to always tell my team that the reason why we had to make a change, keep to a standard, or make a sales goal was because it was corporate policy or my boss's idea. I would say, well, I'm sorry, but corporate has changed this and we better follow the new process. Or the district manager says that we need to do things this way. Or we'd better start selling because the DM is coming for a visit. I borrowed their power. I never created my own. Winning leaders are aware of this limiting language. They understand that by choosing language carefully, they will create action and develop commitment. They say things like, I'm excited to tell you about this new program that's going to benefit all of us. Or my expectations are dot, dot, dot. Or I can't wait to show the boss how high our standards are. These things demonstrate the winning culture that they expect. Winning leaders create our own power by making statements that motivate our teams and show them that we are 100% committed to whatever we're trying to accomplish. We must consciously think about how we're going to roll out any new initiative or change direction. We must proactively look for potential knowledge, importance, or action gaps in our team. Things like word choice, tone of voice, and facial expressions all become important in how we're going to deliver the message and create a culture of winning. As winning leaders, we understand that if our teams don't believe that we are completely committed and behind the message and truly believe in it, there's no way that they will get behind it either. Even if it's something controversial, winning leaders look to see the positive. They practice their delivery with their peers or supervisors so that their verbal and nonverbal communication comes out the way that they want it to. In the end, by following this process, we will begin to create our own power. We will feel like stronger leaders. Our team and our boss will look at us differently. Better yet, we'll look at our own purpose and ourselves differently. The standards and results we achieve are now because of our efforts, not our bosses. Winning leaders create their own power. They never borrow it. Now, if I could just get that drill back. Everybody have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology production. Visit us at gapology.org.